Known for its tender flakiness, Danish dough begins with lamination, a baking technique in which butter and dough are repeatedly folded together and then shaped to hold a variety of fillings, like cream and fruit, cheese, nuts. Let me show you how it's done. To make the dough in your bowl with a dough hook, start mixing four and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one third cup plus one tablespoon of granulated sugar. Now don't leave out the tablespoon. Now also add a half a teaspoon of ground cardamom. Cardamom is a very fragrant and delicious spice and one tablespoon of coarse salt. Four tablespoons of butter, very soft at room temperature. Now in one cup of milk, about 110 degrees, proof two packages of active dry yeast. Stir that a little bit, just proof it so it's soft and you might even see a little bit of bubbling going on. That bubbling is important to see because that will tell you that the yeast is active, that it is alive. So now you can add your eggs one at a time. Need one egg yolk and two whole eggs. Add your milk. You can see that the dough is coming together nicely and just mix until just combined, two or three minutes at the most. Don't over mix. And this is doing well. I can see that all that dry ingredient is mixed into the dough now, just about one minute longer. And so now, notice how I am folding this dough with the heels of my hand. I am kneading like this, but I'm bringing up the sides to always create kind of an envelope. And really, the kneading is about 30 seconds, maybe six or 10 turns. And there, make it into a rectangle. And we have about three pounds and a few ounces of very beautiful dough. Now refrigerate for at least two hours and preferably overnight. Now there are three and a half sticks of butter. The other half stick went into the dough originally, as you remember, and two tablespoons of flour. This is the butter that's going to be incorporated, sort of like a croissant dough with layers. The only difference between this and a croissant is that this has eggs in the dough. So it'll be a little bit heavier and a little less flaky, but still very delicious. Mix that all together, just scrape it down. And I find that by adding a little bit of flour to the butter, it makes it easier to handle. Very, very important. And now this we need to have in a flat rectangle, 10 by 12. And it's gonna be about a half an inch thick. This is going to be folded in to your dough over and over again until you have many layers of dough and butter. So basically 10 by 12. And wrap this up and just either put it in your freezer or in your refrigerator to get a nice rigid piece of butter. So here's our dough, it does rise of its own accord because of those two packages of active dry yeast bursting from this plastic wrap. Oh, and it smells so good. So use some bench flour. You wanna roll this out to a rectangle, 18 by 10. And it's good to have a rolling pin that has the ball bearing handles. Roll in one direction and keep turning the dough so that it doesn't stick to your countertop. Don't use a whole lot of flour. That'll kind of toughen the dough. And if you find you're getting patches of flour, just brush it off. Mm, so beautiful. Really is nice dough. So now 18 inches. Oh, this is 18 inches by 10. Square off the corners as much as you can. And then plop your butter 
So now pull this dough over halfway down the butter. What you're doing is really encasing the butter in the dough. And then we're going to fold this portion over. Now the butter is soft enough to bend. We want to pull it over, completely encasing the butter. Don't have it dripping out the edges. And by the way, if it is warm in your kitchen, either turn on the air conditioning or wait until it gets cold because it's not a good spot to work in if it's too warm. You do not want the butter oozing. Put it back in the fridge until it's cold. Now notice that I turned it 90 degrees because now I will roll it into a similar rectangle in the opposite direction. Flour your pin and roll. This is a little bit more difficult because the butter is still pretty cold. And sometimes you do this, which softens the butter and allows you to roll a little bit more quickly. Don't go too hard on it because then you'll get lumps. That is pretty nice and smooth. And it smells really good. And I think this is okay. So now we have six layers. The next time we'll have 18 layers. But notice I'm trying to match up the edges neatly, trying to keep it really even. Roll it so it's flat and as square corners as possible. There. Now get that wrapped up into the refrigerator, just like croissant dough. There are three different doughs of similar construction. One has eggs, Danish. Two have yeast, Danish croissant. One has just butter and flour, puff pastry. Into the refrigerator until it's nice and firm. We're making now delicious, juicy apricot bow tie Danish. So notice this is marked. This had three full turns. So that's what you want, three turns. So now save your plastic wrap because we're only going to use half of this. And I find that before I cut it in half, I like to roll it a little bit just to get it even in size. This is beautiful dough. Oh, so beautiful. And we want two 13 by 13 inch squares. And this measures 15, so I'm gonna cut it seven and a half. And refrigerate the half you're not going to use. Now roll this into a 13 by 13 inch square. And it is beautiful. It's smooth and keep measuring because 10 by 10, you'll get too thick a dough and you'll have a heavy, thick Danish. And it should be the same thickness, very important. Now get that into the refrigerator. This is chilled, so we want a 12 by 12 inch square. So I'm just trimming the edges so that everything is exactly square. And then we can cut this into nine four inch squares. This is one of my favorites, always has been. This and prune danish I also love. What you're doing is you're encasing the rich pastry cream and the apricot in the flaky danish pastry. There. And now lift your square. So I'm just distributing the dough onto parchment lined baking sheets like that. And now a tablespoon of pastry cream in the center of each Danish. Now this is vanilla flecked, rich, delicious pastry cream. And the apricots we're using are canned apricots, but of course you can use fresh apricots and just place two halves in each. So just imagine if these were apricots from your garden or from your friend in California, how delicious that would be too. You can use sour cherries, you can use sweet cherries, peaches, plums. And now we have to close the Danish. So using a brush, egg wash, working kind of in a diamond. So now fold this up 
and this one over. So neat, so beautiful. And when the dough is this good, you're going to enjoy making a pastry like this. It's easy to work with and the egg wash holds it nicely. So now just cover it with plastic and let it rest for approximately 45 minutes before glazing it and putting it in the oven. So after 45 minutes, these are lighter. They're not really puffy. That's not the object. It's just to rest the dough and get them lighter. Now, egg wash all over the exposed dough and the points. Don't forget the points. Your oven is preheated to 375 degrees. Careful not to put big globs of egg on the parchment paper because you'll only burn that. You just want a pretty, pretty glazed Danish. Really pretty enough. Sprinkle with a little bit of granulated sugar. And this is something you should make for Sunday morning to have with your breakfast. Good for coffee in the afternoon. But I think breakfast is the best time to experience a really good Danish. Put this in your oven. Bake, rotating the sheets halfway through the baking process until the pastries are evenly browned. 20 to 25 minutes. So here they are, bow tie Danish. Cool them on racks and serve them to your guests. Your guests, your family, you will be forever grateful that you made something so special just for them. What a success. Enjoy. I'm just softening the farmer cheese, which is the basis for the filling for our cheese Danish. Eight ounces of farmer cheese and a third of a cup of sugar. So just keep creaming this. It's not gonna get totally soft, but you just wanna break up all the curds. And now add to this one egg. The zest of one bright skinned lemon, about a teaspoon. So if your lemon is really big, don't do the whole thing. But this really adds a tremendous amount of flavor to the cheese. There, one tablespoon of flour, and just mix that all together. And about a quarter of a cup of golden raisins. Stir those in. You don't want a wet filling, but you don't want an ultra dry filling either. You wouldn't want to use a cottage cheese because uh, that's too wet. But this is just right, not too wet and not too dry. So we want a heaping tablespoon. Make sure every tablespoon has a raisin in it or two. And put that right in the center of your Danish. These are the same four inch squares that we had in our apricot Danish. And the 12 inch square cuts into nine four inch squares. And so now use your egg wash on all four corners. The fold here is going to be different than the fold for the apricot bow ties. So pretty, so tasty. The fillings, because there's not that much filling, really have to be flavorful. And you can save this filling in an airtight container for up to three days. Now pull one corner a little bit out, fold it over the filling. This, like that, press down. This, press up. And this over the top. So you're making little envelopes. Yeah, you don't want to apply too much pressure, but you want to press down enough so that the Danish won't unwrap when they're baking. So these get wrapped in plastic wrap. Let them rest for 45 minutes. Make sure your oven is preheated to 375. So now egg wash thoroughly these little packages and uh, sprinkle these with sugar. Sugar helps the Danish brown, gives it a beautiful color and is a nice contrast to the cheese. So there, 375 degrees, bake rotating the sheets halfway through until evenly browned. That will take somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. Set your timer. This is what the cheese Danish looks like. 
All you need is a great cup of coffee. Enjoy. The combined flavors of cinnamon, brown sugar, and orange sandwiched between this delicious cardamom spice Danish dough make this family-sized pastry perfect for a hungry brunch crowd. First, you make your filling, three quarters of a cup of dark brown sugar, a pinch of salt, the zest of one orange. I don't want to skimp on the orange flavor. It's really tasty with the cinnamon and the brown sugar. And a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and one tablespoon of orange juice just to moisten and stir it up. Danishes, you know, are available in so many different shapes and sizes. There are bear claws, snails, braids, envelopes, twists, bow ties, just to name a few. Now look, see, it's really come together. That is a beautiful filling. Now here are our squares of Danish. And to make a round shape, you can just use a bowl as a guide and cut all the way around the bowl. Have an egg wash ready too, which is just one egg beaten with a fork and a soft bristle brush. Keep these chilled. Lift your bowl and now cut the top. Make sure your oven is preheated to 375 degrees. Spread your filling, leaving a little edge all the way around so that you can glue the top to the bottom. I would say leave a half an inch around the outside. I love these little offset spatulas for jobs like this. Mm. This is going to be really good. Now, if you love nuts, you could put nuts in here. If you love chocolate, you could probably add some chunks of chocolate. There's all different kinds of ways to embellish a Danish. So there. Now, put a little egg wash all the way around the edge. This is the glue that holds it together. And lift, you can kind of unfold it. And this is getting a little tiny bit soft, so get that right into the refrigerator until it is chilled enough to cut and shape. So now is the moment of truth. We want to make this look like this. It looks like a six-pointed star with beautiful edges, and it looks very complicated, but watch this. Use a small bowl, put that in the center, and you're going to cut four quadrants with the point of a sharp knife. Now you have to cut all the way through the dough. So we're actually making two halves first. And the dough is cold. If your dough is too warm, this is not going to work. So make sure you really keep your dough cold. So there, so we're almost four quadrants. It has to sit for 45 more minutes, but this is already puffing. Now, each of the quadrants is cut into thirds. This is simple idea, but complicated result. And this is the beauty of Danish. There are really so many patterns that you can work with. It's kind of like making a quilt. And this is like the spokes of a wheel. But then you want to make those spokes into a star. So amazing. So then you pick up and you twist this away from each other like that. And then again, it's starting to look interesting. And proceed around the wheel away and then away again. There. And let rest and rise for about 45 minutes until it's doubled in size like that one. So now I'm going to put this one into the oven while this one is rising. But first, use your egg wash and carefully wash the surface. This one does not get any sugar because you have a lot of sugar inside. Your oven is preheated to 375 degrees and make sure that there is either a tray or some foil under your pan because this is bound to drip. Gorgeous, isn't it? 25 to 30 minutes until it's deep golden brown all over. 
and let it cool on the cookie sheet for five minutes before you remove it to a wire rack. This is what it looks like when it's baked. Best to eat in the day it's baked, but I guarantee there won't be any leftover after you finish tearing and sharing. Enjoy. So you've noticed that we've had lots of scraps of Danish pastry and rather than throw them away or keep them in the freezer and find them next year, it's a good idea to make some individual Danishes out of them. And this is a very simple way. For the filling, a cup of sugar and about oh, a small amount of cinnamon, like a half a teaspoon. And just mix this together. This will make quite a few nice little Danishes that I think you're going to love. And roll your dough out to a rectangle. So it's layered and layered, and it's gonna be even more layered after you roll it out. And because it's so buttery, it just doesn't even stick to the bench. I love that so much about this dough. Roll it to an eighth of an inch. So brush with your egg wash first. This will hold the cinnamon and sugar in place. Sprinkle on your cinnamon and sugar mix. So much fun to be creative with leftovers. Try to spread the sugar as evenly as possible. So now, just rolling it in and fold this in half. Just trim this edge off. Don't feel obligated to use that little edge. That can be just a throwaway leftover. And here too, even off your rectangle. Now cut this into three quarter inch strips. Take the strip, twist it, and roll this like this. Tuck under the edge. Now that is very pretty. And wait till you see how that bakes up. And the more twists, the prettier, I think. Now look how gorgeous these are. Let these rise for 45 minutes or so under plastic. Spoon a little, like a teaspoon of apricot jam on the center of each. Bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. And this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. Aren't they gorgeous? And they're leftover. Well, I certainly hope that I've inspired you to make your own Danish and try different sizes and shapes. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Enjoy. Use a pizza wheel to cut Danish dough into four inch squares, an eighth of an inch thick. Cut the squares three quarters of the way from each corner towards the center. Fold every other point towards the center and press to seal. Fill each pinwheel center with one teaspoon of raspberry jam. Cover and let rise until doubled in bulk, about 45 minutes. Brush with egg wash and sprinkle with sugar. Bake 20 to 25 minutes.